Hello everyone, we are back here for part 2 of a 3 part series of videos on the Gleason's A map. This video will be different from the first one, since I'll be talking about the Flat Earth the Divine Clock. So let's go ahead and get started. The main mistake people did in the past was when they were trying to figure out the shape of the Earth they placed the sun at the center of creation. They built an earth model around the sun. Therefore, they had to come up with several theories to keep the sun at the center of creation and not earth itself. Our role today is to place earth back to its natural position of being the center of creation and try to figure out what the sun really is and how it travels around the flat earth. We should not repeat the mistakes of the people in the past by placing the sun at the center of creation and build a model that's sun-centered, heliocentric. If you build an earth model around the sun, you will be known as a heliocentrist. Now let's take a look in the past and see how they calculated the position of the sun and use that to count the hours of the day. Take a listen at this person explaining sundials. For the invention of clocks and watches, sundials were used to tell time. In fact, sundials were used in Egypt more than 3,500 years ago. They consisted of a simple stick pushed into the ground which cast a shadow onto a dial. To mark the passing of the hours, sundial faces were divided into equal parts. People built sundials to sit flat on the ground fit flat against walls, this sundial is a typical example. It is made to sit flat and has a gnomon that, when properly installed, points to what astronomers call the North Celestial Pole, the point in the sky directly above the Earth's North Pole. Not only the Egyptians in the past, but also the Chinese, who have a culture that dates back 4,000 years, express their knowledge about the circling sun through their religious beliefs. The yin yang is nothing more, nothing else, than a representation on how the sun and the moon circulate above the flat earth. Nowadays, we can figure some things out by using high altitude balloons and computer models. As for example, the different temperatures around the flat earth. Displayed here on the flat earth map are regional temperatures represented by different colors. The blue color regions like the Arctic and the Antarctic show regions that are cold and not visited by the sun. The yellow regions represent the regions where the sun circulates over for only three months in a year. The red region, the equator, is where the sun spends more time when journeying south to the Tropic of Capricorn and on its way back to the Tropic of Cancer. In both models, globe and flat show the equatorial region as being the hottest region on Earth. This is due to the fact that the Sun spends more time in that region when journeying from the Tropic of Capricorn to the Tropic of Cancer and back and forth. The difference between the two models is that the global model claims against rational reasoning in our senses that Earth orbits around the Sun, making the Sun the center of the universe, whereas the flat Earth places the Sun as just a luminary of equal importance as the Moon, but not more important than Earth itself. But one thing both models have in common. Both are aware that the circular equatorial region is hotter due to the fact that the Sun's heat covers that region more than the tropics. Now the first problem we come across when looking at the heliocentric model is the fact they claim Earth has a tilt of 23.5 degrees. On this tilting, wobbling, and rotating ball Earth, temperatures at the Arctic and Antarctic regions shouldn't be the same. Not only that, but on the globe, the hotter region represented by the color red shouldn't have a diagonal pattern. With this tilt, the globe model should experience hotter temperatures way above the equator and way below the equator at different times 
of the year. The temperature zone should look tilted like this. The white line in this image represents the equator. If the Earth were a spinning ball in space with a tilt of 23.5 degrees, the hotter temperature in the middle should have a zigzag shape reaching regions farther north and farther south. This is really one of the first big problems for the globe model. Although the model do recognize the fact that there is more heat concentrated in the circular region of the equator. The hotter region, represented by the color red, fits more perfectly to the flat Earth model, represented here by the AE map. The Protestant reformer Martin Luther also pointed out the error of the astronomers in the 16th century by pointing out that the Bible describes a local traveling sun that stopped in the sky during an important battle. He said, Holy Scripture tells us, so did Joshua bid the sun to stand still, and not the earth. Psalm 19 also describes a traveling sun going in a circuit. Please pay attention to the word circuit in this passage. We will look closely at its meaning later on. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the end of the heaven, and his circuit unto the ends of it, and there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. Let's now look at some more evidences of a circling sun. This is a time lapse of the sun traveling along with an airplane captured during a flight from New York to Moscow. You may see it getting dark as the sun journeys farther west, disappearing at the horizon, coming back to view when approaching as it heads east. The sun and the airplane meet again when the airplane is close to landing in Moscow. Let's now look at some time lapse of the circling sun around the Arctic region. Some of these footages were even captured years before the great flat earth awakening. Please enjoy the music while you look at these stunning footage captured by Elvin Kolstad in Norway.
So, which model matches common sense? Which model matches observation and scriptures? I have pointed out that the equatorial region on the globe should have a different pattern due to the fact Earth has a 23.5 degrees tilt. Let's now move to the biggest clue that the globe model is wrong and that the Gleason's A map is correct. Time zones. This ball Earth had to be divided into, into 24 equal parts to make up for the time zones. Let's listen to Gerald from NASA explaining how that works on the globe. Hi, I'm Jared with more KSNN Math News you can use. Did you know the Earth has 24 different time zones? Another Earth's day is 24 hours long. Is that why we have 24 zones of time? Yes, the Earth is a sphere. It is divided into 360 degrees with longitude lines. I remember those lines are drawn north to south. The Earth turns 360 degrees in 24 hours. If you divide 360 degrees by 24 hours, it means the Earth turns 15 degrees in one hour. So time zones are 15 degrees wide. And that's why we have 24 time zones. According to NASA, time zones are represented in these lines from north to south. All time zones are defined north to south. Here is where the problem lies again. Earth, according to the heliocentric model, has a 23.5 degrees tilt. Just like the hot region around the equator should have a different pattern, so does the time zones. If time zones on the globe are defined by the light of the Sun due to Earth's rotation around the Sun, time zones should also have a diagonal pattern. Observe here how the Sun shines on a tilted Earth. On a tilted Earth, the easternmost region of Brazil and the easternmost region of the United States should experience sunlight at the same time, having the same time zone. Remember what the boys from NASA said. The lines are divided from north to south starting at the North Pole. The tilting of the spinning ball Earth destroys their own heliocentric model. It is divided into 360 degrees with longitude lines. I remember those lines are drawn north to south. 360 divided by 24 equals to 15 degrees per hour. Therefore, between 69 degrees north and 45 degrees south, we have a 50 degrees difference, which equals to 200 minutes or 3 hours and 20 minutes difference. This chart from sunearthtools.com shows that the sun is at the same spot in the sky at each location, in a diagonal form, despite that the sun's rays are hitting Earth at a straight angle. The conclusion is that both the temperature around the equator and time zones do not match with the globe Earth model. Let's now put the pieces together on the Gleason's A map and see how it all fits perfectly as a divine clock. Scripture supports the notion that Earth has a circular shape. Job 26.10 reads, He hath compassed the waters with bounds until the day and night come to an end. This is a 13th century painting showing the Creator using a compass to form the shape of the Earth. Just like sundials are laid on a flat surface with circular patterns, so is the flat Earth described with the Gleason's flat Earth map. The circle of the Earth is divided into 24 equal parts, which equals to 360 degrees. We have the Antarctic Circle, as Antarctic is historically recognized, and the Sun and Moon circulating above, just as we have demonstrated this far. The hours of the day is defined by the Sun. As the Sun passes over each 15 degrees division, that division is exactly 12 noon, and so successively throughout the flat Earth. The hour hand on the clock had always represented to be the Sun. There was a time when our clocks were 24 hours clock. Let's go back to that word circuit we find in Psalm 19 for a minute. It seems that some people have a misunderstanding over the word circuit. It doesn't mean a perfect circle. It means start and finish at the same place. We see here how circuits are different and there are all shapes of circuits. 
most misunderstandings about the AV map is the fact that the circuit of the sun is not precisely defined and either it can be. There's a little bit of mystery on what the sun is and how it works. Like in the movie Enter the Dragon with Bruce Lee, the stars, the moon and the sun might go through portals and mirrors, which makes it difficult to know where the sun is when triangulated. To demonstrate better the path of the luminaries, we can look at eclipses. Here are the paths of eclipses as demonstrated on the Mercator projection. When we convert these images into AE projections, we see the circular pattern of the Sun, although they are not perfect circles. In fact, I pointed that out in 2017, when the AE glistens map came under attack. Let's look at that 2017 video for a second. Okay, we see here the path of three eclipses in different times of the year. You see the one that goes from South America to Africa. It goes from Argentina, across the Atlantic Ocean, Congo, Red Sea. Then we have another one that starts uh, in the Africa, goes through the Red Sea, India and South China. And the last one, one that goes over the Pacific Ocean, over Caroline Island. Now you throw all this info on the glistens map and this is what we get the same cities are uh, same places Argentina Atlantic Ocean Congo Red Sea India South China Hong Kong Caroline Island clearly that it shows a circle on top of the glistens map because this is the circuit of the Sun and the moon the, it's not a perfect circle like we thought it would be but it's still going in circles and we what we can see is that the sun performs its own circuit according to it's supposed to to do now let's look at another one this image here shows this the path of three other eclipses one in july on july 22nd 2009 then on november 3rd 2013 and the next one that will happen on April 8th, 2024. It goes like a zigzag, but you know, this is not what happens. So let's throw out this info on the Gleason's map. And this is what we have. Uh, exactly the same path, but you see on a circle. Not a perfect circle, again, as we say, but it's still the sun and the moon perform a circuit uh, all over the flat earth and we throw everything here on the glistens map that's what we have uh, the one that happened on march 9 2016 and the one that will happen on april 8 2024 and the one that's going to happen on august 27 2027 you see the cities mexico new orleans new york newfoundland spain libya Red Sea, Diego Guerrilla, Sumatra, Borneo, Luwuk, Caroline Island. Let's throw all these cities, let's look on the Gleason's map. That's what we have. Okay, same cities, same places. And we see that the path of the sun and the moon is a circle. And they circle over the flat earth. Not a perfect circle, one more time saying again. They don't go exactly over the tropic, but they still go in circle. As you see, the sun does not perform a perfect circle above the sky. In 2016, an Italian researcher defended the idea of the sun having a hyperbolic circuit. According to this researcher, both Middleton and Ross detected an oval shape of the sun's path as being the true circuit of the sun, as they navigated the seas following the sun's path. The rotation of the stars above also supports the AE projection. Please pay close attention to this video and see how the Cleason's AE map has been used in precise instruments of computing to locate stars and constellations above. Alex Gleason created his map at the end of the 19th century as the basis for a timekeeping device that he patented. When someone files a patent application, the date that it's filed is recorded, 
to avoid people stealing an idea while an application is processed or pending. As such, the date that a patent is filed and the date that it's finally allowed to stand are usually some time apart. It's the date allowed that matters most because it's the earliest date that the invention is considered to exist. The more eagle-eyed among you may have noticed that the application date and the allowed date are some six months apart. Now you know why. If you want to patent something that includes parts that were invented by someone else, you must cite the patent number for each of those parts. You can't put a new patent on someone else's invention. You can only patent your own bits. When you apply for a patent, your application must cite the patent numbers for any part of your design that was made by someone else. At the bottom of many patent applications, you will see the numbers for those patents that are cited. So let's see if anyone else thinks Alex Gleason's layout is credible. If you run a search on the internet using Alex Gleason's patent number, you'll find that there are three patents that use his map all granted in the 1970s for a device called the Universal Planisphere Complete Guidance and Computer System that was invented by one William A. Eisenhower. In the same way that the ground can be mapped as a planisphere, so too can the skies, and when the two are used together, they provide an extremely reliable indicator of exactly where you are on the face of the Earth. Most modern navigators rely on GPS, but any good navigator will at least have a working knowledge of the lights in the sky for emergencies. The sun, the moon and the stars all follow very precise patterns in the sky. And if you know where they are at any point in time, they can be used to calculate exactly where you are. Navigation needs only to head in the direction in which the compass is pointing and use the sun, moon and stars as markers to check that you don't stray too far from your planned course. Knowing where each of them are for any particular time and date has long been calculated by the astronomical and naval institutions of the world, and to find where they are on any particular time and date we use an ephemeris. An ephemeris is a detailed set of tables from which a navigator can calculate their position anywhere on the Earth. During daylight hours, navigation is reliant on the sun and occasionally the moon. At night, the stars provide so much more information, but the calculations are still subject to mistakes. So in 1975, Mr. William Eisenhower patented his Universal Planisphere Complete Guidance and Computer System. It looks rather complicated, so let's simplify it a little. Essentially, it's a series of disks that are riveted together so they can rotate over each other. The principal disks show the sun and the moon positions in the sky, and two disks show the principal stars and constellations in the night sky. Another disk shows the surface of the Earth and the principal land masses. If you look closely, you'll recognize the land masses match those that are shown on the familiar AE map. In other words, the AE map and its relative proportions are considered to be accurate enough for the purposes of world navigation. The plans here can be found on the original patent application, but they don't do it much justice, so I figured it might be nice to see what a real one looks like. It measures 16 inches across, so as you can probably imagine, it doesn't contain nor does it need to show any inland details. For all practical purposes, it needs only to show the coastlines of the world continents. Remember, ships stop when they reach the land. For anyone who takes a moment to look at the patent application, you'll read that it can be used to show which lights in the sky are above which points on the Earth, and conversely, which points on the Earth are below the various lights in the sky. It shows what the sky looks like from the ground. So, in closing, the flat, circular map of the world seems to have a fairly reliable track record for the purposes of navigation around the world when coupled with the lights that we all see in the sky. The lights in the sky can tell us nothing in themselves of the shape of the Earth, 
but they certainly do provide us with a reliable reference system. Perhaps the lights in the sky have more to tell us. The vicious attacks on the Listens A map started in 2017, coincidentally when Google and YouTube started censoring Flat Earth videos. Was it a concerted effort to censor Flat Earth? Are the attacks on the map being funded by Big Tech? The e-map has been removed from several platforms. Prior to that, the e-map was found in many different places. This AE wristwatch was sold for $12,000 in an auction in 2011. And here are more examples of amazing word clocks using the AE projection. Clock and kind of this domed glass on the front. Anyway, this carries the Seiko brand name. It's a world time clock. It's, it's pretty straightforward as far as a world time clock goes, but I found the most charming thing was how the tip of the second hand had this little airplane on it. And so, oh, that, that's really neat here. Uh, you know, all, all the time zones go around. So if I line up the 12 o'clock position with my local time zone, in this case being Denver, then it will give you the uh, local time in all these other places around the world. And you've got this 24-hour dial. This one, instead of an airplane, has a little boat demonstrating how circumnavigation works on the flat earth map. Seiko and um, it's got a beautiful quartz mechanism but ha manages to do a lovely sweep on the second hand and we have uh, a day and night uh, dial here and a rotating you can if I just adjust it you can adjust what city you are in so I put New York at the top there and then you have 48 cities across the world you can instantly see what time it is, whether it's day or night. Um, it's just a really fantastic thing to have. Um, I'm so pleased with this. And Nowadays, they have replaced the map with the false, inaccurate Mercator's projection. They just look awful. Flat Earth is a divine clock. I have provided here enough evidence for you to see. You don't set your house on fire because the front light is not illuminating the yard the way you want it to be. You don't disregard an excellent map because you don't understand what the sun is and its trajectory above the flat earth. We are not meant to know the secrets of the heavens. Psalm 115 says, The heavens are the heavens of the Lord, but the earth he has given to the sons of men. We are not meant to know the secrets of the heavens and how they work. Unfortunately, the controllers have prevented us from exploring more and acquiring more knowledge about the place we live on. Please join me next week to the conclusion of this series of three videos on the Gleason's map. We will compare the Gleason's map with some other models and see which one best represents the realm we live in. Take care and until next week. Bye-bye.